Have you ever been dumped and then you fell apart? Like you threw an epic pity party moping for days or weeks? Maybe you went on a three-day ice cream binge. You texted your dumper who was clear with you that they wanted out, that you just wanted one more chance. And then when they didn't give it to you, you ranted about what a shitty person they are. I'm just speaking hypothetically. Or maybe you like to beat yourself up. Oh, this is proof that I am a piece of shit. Okay, and maybe you're the ruminator type going over and over again, what happened, trying to figure out your key mistakes. But if you had just avoided, you wouldn't have gotten dumped. But here's, here's another idea for you. What if getting dumped was a time to review your wins or even to celebrate? Welcome to the Nice Guy Show. I'm your host, Ari Graff. I'm joined with my co-hosts, Faisal Kokar and Chuck Chapman. The three of us are coaches dedicated to helping nice guys because we are recovering nice guys ourselves. Together, we have decades of experience helping men level up. Our mission is to help men develop the confidence and the skills to get the love, sex, and success they desire. So I was thinking about this because I had a breakup back in January, someone I'd been seeing for about four months and she liked dating me, but she didn't feel like she got enough of me. Um, she wanted to find a partner and potentially have a baby. And I realized those were things that I probably didn't want with her. I'm just, I'm at a point where I'm not in a rush to partner up with someone. I'm, I'm not sure if I would ever want to have another baby. Um, I've been out of the, the baby stage for a while. So, so she dumped me. Uh, I, I wanted to continue dating her and getting to know her, but she knew what she wanted and, and I understood and I respected it. I didn't want her. I didn't want to get in her way of getting what she wanted. And I appreciated that she was the one who initiated an honest conversation with me. So it didn't disappoint me too much disappointed me a little bit, but I didn't fall apart. I felt good that we had had an honest conversation. I also felt good that I hadn't tried to hide what I wanted so I could continue dating her. I, I didn't try to manipulate her in some way just to keep it going. So that was a win. And I was able to identify that right away. Okay. I'm being honest. I'm not hiding, I'm not manipulating. Those are wins. I'm not doing things that I've done in the past to try to keep things going. You know, so that's, I think, how to be a good dumpy. And you know, we talk in uh, the nice guy culture about being a good ender. Um, we don't necessarily talk about what happens when someone ends with us. So I wanted to ask you guys, um, you know, tell, tell me, Tell me a, uh, an experience where you got dumped and where you, you fell apart. And what are you, what are you doing now that's different, Faisal? It's, uh, yeah, I got dumped hook, line, and sinker when it came to my marriage. You know, that was the point when, you know, she said to me, you know, she's leaving me and my world just fell completely apart. That's when I... You know, I had put all my eggs in, you know, her basket. And then there she is going with my eggs with her, you know, with her basket. And I've got nothing left. And I crumbled. And I crumbled because when I, I put everything towards a relationship. I put everything towards my family. And that was it. They were the central point. And when they left, I was just left with this massive echo chamber of there's nothingness here. And this big back like emptiness and I didn't handle it well at first because I panicked I got abandoned my abandonment issues came out uh, a lot of negative self-talk came out as well as you know like hey I'm gonna uh, another part of me was like I'm gonna make the you know make myself better rather than being bitter make myself better but it was hard work and that part of being rejected, not wanted anymore, not having my family was a real struggle for me. When that happened, and then I had some relationships after where I had some breakups again, nothing 
compared to the magnitude and the pain I had it in my um, marriage breakup. And it wasn't just because the relationship failed or anything, because it was just the whole family. After that, I've been dumped a few times because, you know, like you, uh, I've had girls saying, I want more, I want a relationship, I want marriage, I want kids. And I'm at that stage where I've had kids, I've had marriage, that's not a priority to me. My purpose is a priority to me. What I want to do in my life is a priority to me. And I've built such a good life, I enjoy my life, that a woman is a compliment to my life. The icing on the cake. Icing on the cake, as Dr. Glover says. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Chuck? Well, I'm going back to my, my marriage as well, because I think that that was, you know, that was actually like a two year, <laughs> you're talking about like maybe two weeks or something like that of ice cream binge. This is like a two year of like, you know, ego binge. Um, yeah. yeah, just kind of like acting I've out. I've a two year ice careless. cream binge. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, this is a this is a two year um you know hedonistic binge you know just whatever felt good uh whatever would get me out of the pain was you know what i saw after um and like i'm the poster child for what not to do and and yet i've i've also worked with guys who have gone through breakups and kind of helped coach them through some of their breakups. And I'm always super impressed with the guys that are able to remain kind of centered and continue to do the things that are hard, like taking care of themselves and, you know, continuing to, to work out, to eat right and to kind of stay on track. And it's so impressive to me when I see that, because again, I just didn't have that within me, but it was if I ever have to go through it again, I have a better idea of how I would handle this um, in terms of like really focusing on myself. And I think one of the things that happens with us nice guys is we tend to enmesh in relationships and the enmeshment is like we become part of that. And you think of an enmeshment would be enmeshing means like a, a weaving of, all right? So if you have in a mesh relationship, essentially what you've taken on is an, is an appendage, right? And then when there's the severing that takes place, it's almost as if you've lost an arm or something along, along those lines. And anybody who, who's ever like lost an appendage will talk about like the phantom feelings and the phantom pains. And I think that happens to us when we're, when we go quickly into relationship, we're all in we're off the bat, we get enmeshed. And then when they break up, what happens is the pain, the phantom feeling of where this person go, uh, or, you know, I've, I've got to get my equilibrium back in some way that they panic and they do whatever they can to try to get that enmeshment back. Because again, one of the hallmarks of the nice guy syndrome is that, you know, we uh, are responsible for everybody else's feelings and emotions, especially, you know, our, our mothers oftentimes. And that, we grow up with enmeshed relationships with our mothers, right? And then so when we find a woman, we essentially do the same thing that we've done before, which is a mesh. And when you enmesh, like I said, you, you're setting yourself up for a really hard breakup because that's the severing that takes place. Yeah, I think part of what uh, you guys have gotten at is uh, you've got to <clears throat> you've got to uh, bake your cake, as uh, Dr. Glover talks about. You know, your great cake of a life. That's that's your base. You know, that's that's your friendships, your professional relationships, your your habits, your hobbies. You know, this is this is your life, and. Uh, your woman or your partner is the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. So they enrich your life. They don't have to complete your life. So yeah. And I'll I think say there's an important distinction there. And if, so if, if, if you have a, a, a rich, complete life without a woman, you're going to feel more grounded if you have a breakup. I'll say this, and I think that, that, Again, part of the nice guy syndrome, most nice guys don't have a lot of self-confidence. 
when you're building your great cake of a life, actually what you're doing is you're creating self-confidence. I got this great life, you know, when we use the woman as the emotional center of our universe, she becomes the cake. But if we've built our great cake and we have this confidence when she leaves, it's a little bit like, okay, well, you know, you're missing out. Um, cause I got this great cake and I can focus on that knowing that other icing is going to come along because I've got the confidence to invite somebody into my life. So I, I, I think that the magic ingredient of creating a, a great cake of a life is actually that we increase our self-confidence and our self-worth. So what I'm getting is women love a good cake, right? <laughs> yeah, you get it. That, that's what I get. If you want to attract women, you got to have cakes, right? And that's, yeah. it is true. It's, it's a true. I really like pie well. though. <laughs> no, no, no. Women a like great pie. pie of a life. Like what a great pie of a life. <laughs> You have the right crust That's on top. Yeah. Pies for the guy as well. <laughs> it's you know, like you guys were saying, this is something I was really shocked when I came out of my you know breakup, and then when I went through coaching, healing, therapy work, and you know my when my coach said to me, you know, you were enmeshed, you were you know highly bonded with your partner because you did that with your mother you did the same pattern you repeated with women. So when they left you, that severing, that pain that happened, you know, fractured you even more. And you know, a lot of guys, you know, I find myself in pain, in agony, in loneliness, resentment, bitterness, angry. And that was a, a learning point. And like you, Chuck, I've seen guys who have gone through breakups and they remain cool, calm, some panic. And they start weaponizing kids. They, you know, they go real ugly way. And there are some ways that some guys just, you know, really work on themselves and say, take full responsibility. And breakups, I, I've loved breakups. You know, it's really, really weird. But just after a breakup, it's probably one of the, the greatest time to reflect and have that space. And, you know, I feel sorry for the guys who are always in long-term relationships. They don't get that solid space for introspection because they always have those you know um that person in their life always present so what i noticed was that every time i had a breakup and i had a clean slate it gave me a lot of reflection of like insights into myself where where i need to work on where i was plateauing where i was actually showing up strong and it gave me a lot of room to adjust and then reapproach as well yeah, see, I like I like this. You're getting at one of my take home points is, you know, that a breakup, just like the relationship itself, it's a learning experience. But it can be hard to learn from the relationship sometimes when you're in it. I think after you've broken up, you could get a little more distance from it. Um, but a, a lot of the guys the nice guys that I work with, you, you know, they, they are clinging to their relationship, even when it's, it's, it's probably dead already. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of sort of spinning in their heads about like, well, if, you know, maybe I can resuscitate this, maybe this can be saved. And so I don't, I don't think they're ever they're not necessarily getting to the wisdom that they could get from the relationship. And I, I mean, I was certainly guilty of that during my marriage. Um, and I, I'm grateful that I'm grateful for that breakup, kind of like what you're saying, because I learned so much from it and I felt liberated afterwards, you know, once, once I finally got <clears throat> fully dumped, I mean, I, I, I'm actually grateful that she, did it definitively yeah. and that, you know, I, I see a lot of guys or people in general who are in these kind of muddled relationships. And e even after they break up, there's still that potential, like, are, are we going to get back together? There's, there's nothing sort of definitive. And then they, they don't get to the true reflection and then they don't get to find out what's on the other side. That's another thing that I'm often telling guys is like, 
there's so much good stuff on the other side of this breakup of this relationship that isn't working. Like, I can't, I can't wait to see what that's like for you. But, but they're just focused on the hurt and the loss, the, the loss, focus on yeah. the loss on the, yeah. And I think, you know, as you know, losses are more painful than gains as well. And, you know, it's a good point that, you know, you raised was that, you know, when we are in a relationship or when we still hung up about our past partner, we're still in the attachment. And when we have this bind, this attachment, it, it doesn't give us any space and time to reflect on, on those binds and, and, and uh, attachment. And it's a bit like, um, I remember Susan Anderson said, you know, when you're single, you cannot work on your relationship uh, skills because the relationship patterns are dormant. And when you're in a say, relationship, the single p aspect parts of you, there's be another part of you that will be dormant. And it's only when you become single can you address those or work on them and have that reflection. So it's a great balance to have. You know, relationships are inc incredible. I think they're very important in people's lives as, as well as that single time reflection time. You know, but that reflection time, you know, it's, it's pointless. No, are you brought something up that I, I think is important is like when you are going through a breakup, there's just a grieving process, right? And I, I'm always reminded of, you know, the five stages of grief where, you know, denial, anger, depression, bargaining, and acceptance. And I think where nice guys get stuck is in the bargaining phase, which is, well, if I can just do this, if I can get her to see this, if I can just, you know, if I buy her flowers and we're bargaining, trying to get, you know, restore this relationship rather than moving forward to the last stage, which is acceptance. Like this is over, you know, I, it's time for me to move on. And I think it's such an important thing to kind of understand, like you are going to go through a grieving process when there's a breakup and you may be in a relationship going through the breaking, uh, you know, breaking up process and be grieving while you're in the relationship and not actually even know it. And then when the relationship, you know, when there is the actual severing that happens and, you know, she goes away, you're knee deep into the bargaining because you've already been experiencing, you know, the denial, anger and depression that goes along with the grieving process. And um, so just a, just a kind of a little uh, um, thing I oftentimes will ask guys is like, where are you at in the grieving stage? And are you stuck in bargaining? And if you're stuck in bargaining, how can you move out of bargaining into acceptance? I love that. So, so breaking up gives you the, uh, you know, time to reflect on, you know, the grieving process, because the grieving process doesn't just always happen with human, it can happen with, with property, job, anything yeah. else as well. So, you know, it's a great place to learn and heal and grow because that's a, a incredible yeah, that, growth. That, that was, um, that was really helpful, Chuck, you know, and I think it's important to th think about being dumped isn't necessarily just one moment. It, mm. it could be a long, slow dump. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't like a good, long, <laughs> slow dump. Uh, it didn't take long, did it? I was, I was, I was just wait, waiting to, to, to say that. Yeah, you were just waiting to dump that on us, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I like to spend a long time on the toilet. but uh, Yeah. And on that note, uh, <laughs> thanks again for being part of the Nice Guy Show. Please, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe. If you're listening to us on the toilet, I mean, on your favorite <laughs> podcast platform, make sure to subscribe there as well. Uh, and go to the nice guy show to, com to get on the mailing list. And we'll see you next time. You've been listening to the nice guy show with certified nice guy recovery coaches, Ari Graf, Chuck Chapman, and Faisal Coker. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can listen to our latest episodes and visit us on www.theniceguyshow.com. If you have any topics you'd like to hear us discuss, send us an email at support at theniceguyshow.com. Thanks for listening.